Alright guys, Zachman18 here. Welcome back to the WTZM TV channel ET Superstation. It is time to continue on with our Let's Play of Apollo Justice Ace Attorney on the Nintendo DS. Uh, we are on the final case uh, right now um, of the game according to my comments section on one of my previous parts of my uh, of this Let's Play. And uh, Sorry, it took me a little bit to figure that out. Um, so we're on the final case, number four, Turnabout Succession. Let's jump into it. I'm really excited to see what this last one is. Everyone says that this is the best best case in the game. And that is the whole truth of this case. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, someone shot. In order to understand it myself, I had to know the story of these last seven long years. Oh, this is Phoenix, thinking. Nothing happens by chance. All is connected. And now, you stand ready to begin the final chapter of this story. Will the defendant be found guilty or innocent? The decision is yours. Oh my goodness. Sweet intro, wow. I'm already excited. Hey Apollo, look on TV, look, look. Yeah, uh, I'm kinda busy. Whoa, look at that. He's the last Grimarie, all right, amazing. Apollo, you should be watching this. Ow, 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 what, what? I was writing about our last case in my journal. Lawyers are supposed to write things in, re in record, re records, Apollo, not journals. And why not? That case was three months ago. Hey, it's a long story. I did a lot, you know. I want to vacuum pack the feel of the moment for later. Right now, I'm wowing the crowd by figuring out how Lemoir disappeared. That's right, Uncle Valen did that illusion too. But you're missing him on TV right now. Ugh, <sighs> we're just getting to the good part. I suppose I should watch a little TV with her. After all, her father's expecting me to look after her while he's away. What you're now seeing is a rehearsal for the greatest magic show on Earth, happening right here at our very own Sunshine Coliseum. The Sunshine Coliseum? Hey, that's where the Greek Gaviners concert was. Only three more days until miracles happen here, right before your unbelie unbelieving eyes. The legendary Troupe Gamarie is performing for the first time in seven years. That's going to be great. I'm so there. You and Daddy are coming too. The legendary Gamarie's. If Trucy's real father were still alive, he'd be on that stage performing miracles. I've got the tickets and everything. Here's yours, Apollo. All right. Ah, you are here, working out on hardly working? <laughs> hey, how have you been? Hi there, stranger. Not exactly the kind of greeting I want to hear from my own kid. Though he, though he has been gone a long time. <laughs> how goes it, Trucy? Here, I got a present for you. Yay, pudding, I love pudding. Ooh, it's farm fresh. And not just one pudding, but three whole cups. I'll have to pace myself. Well, I'm beat. That's right, Daddy. You're on a top secret mission. You've got to take it easy with the secrets, you know. <laughs> How right you are. So you still can't tell us what your mission is? Maybe it is time. It has something to do with you, anyway. Huh? With me? Ooh, maybe you're getting a top secret mission, too. Maybe you can be one of those guys. A, sp a spy. Can't I just be a defense attorney? <laughs> to be honest, telling you about the mission was my whole reason for coming here today. What? Tell me, you've heard of the Juris system, yes? The Juris system? That's right, the new legal system everyone's talking about. Have you heard of it, Apollo? Huh? Uh, maybe. Maybe not as many people are talking about it as I thought. The Juris system, huh? So, Daddy, what's this Juris system thing? Well, Trucy, do you know what a jury is? I've heard of it. Isn't that those people who sit in court in those old courtroom dramas? The ones who get to decide if a guy's innocent or guilty? Do you know, do you know, Apollo? Only from TV. It's 12 people chosen from the community, right? Well, they're thinking about re reviving that system. 
They're calling the new system the Jura system. No more doing whatever you like, Your Honor. Not quite that harsh. The jurists cooperate with the judge. They help analyze the case from different angles. Ah, there will be only six of them under the current proposal, right? Well, you know your stuff, Apollo. Their findings directly affect the verdict. Hopefully people will start taking the courts a little more seriously, seriously now. I feel like I'm on some kind of educational TV show starring Dr. Wright. <laughs> Dr. Wright, his assistant Trucy, and mascot Apollo, the perfect team. Mascot? Hey. <laughs> so, what is this secret mission? The Jura system is my mission, more or less. Anyway, keep in mind that new ideas like this system are always risky, Apollo. Too true. Everyone's got an opinion, and they just talk and talk and nothing gets decided. Kinda like you, Apollo. Uh, I'm not that bad, am I? In any case, we're going to give it a shot. A test, if you will. I don't like tests. We'll take a case as a sample and choose six jurists. I'll be the one helping with that process, incidentally. Helping? How? Well, for one, I'll be chair of the jurist system sim simulated ju court committee. The chair constructs the ideal situation, choosing the case, the jurist candidates, even the judge in the courtroom. Wow, it's like you have a real job. I was never that good at the, pi at the piano, to be honest. Once a lawyer, always a lawyer, I guess. The trial's tomorrow, by the way. Don't miss it. The, tr the trial simulation, that is. A simulation, huh? Sounds interesting. So, what kind of case is the trial simulation about? Well, since it is the first run-through of a new system, I wanted something simple. Good thinking. No sense worrying yourself out on something that's too serious. True. The case is a murder. That's not simple at all. By simple, did you mean that the defendant is... Guilty. Yes, most likely. So, good luck, Apollo. Um, with what? With the trial tomorrow. You're defending, of course. Recall that I said it had something to do with you. Go for it, Apollo. It's just a test case anyway. No sweat. Yeah, but there's still a verdict to be decided. And a potentially serious sentence. The most serious in a worst case scenario. Ah, you mean the verdict's for real? That's not a test trial, that's a real trial. All the forms have been filed. There's no turning back now. The trial begins tomorrow at 10 a.m. Hope you can make room in your schedule. Why am I only hearing about this now? Ah, yes, there was a change this morning. I picked a new case. Eh? Something that happened last night. Hey, Apollo, I know you're all excited about that secret mission, but what about this? The, tr the Troop Gamaria Grand Magic Show. Huh? Oh, right, the card tricks. They're not card tricks, they're grand illusions, miracles, the apocalypse. I have another... So what, this, that's three whole days from now. It's at Sunshine Coliseum, let's go, let's go today. We can say hi to Uncle Valent. Have fun. What? I can't go by myself. You know I'm not very outgoing. Right. Why not go, why not go with her? But what about the secret mission? Oh, don't worry about that. You'll hear all about it tomorrow, regardless. I don't trust that smile. He knows something that he's not telling me. Yip, yippee, now you can take me to the Coliseum. I suppose it wouldn't kill me to pop over there. Ah, Grimarie, that reminds me. What's this, Daddy? Isn't that Silk Hat the Grimarie seal? Consider it a birthday present, Trucy. Thanks, it's great. But today isn't my birthday. Hmm, good point. What day is it today, Apollo? Huh, today? Um, I think it's Recycle Your Plastics Day. Then it's a Recycle Your Plastic present. Yippee, so it's plastic. I've given up trying to understand them. It's much easier that way. So what is it? Can I open it, Daddy? No. Huh? Huh? <laughs> You'll need that envelope someday. Someday soon. Don't open it until then. Well, why didn't you just hold on to it until then? Because that would be the logical thing to do. <laughs> An envelope about the Grimarius, huh? Hmm. Alright, so what case are you going to use? You really want to know, don't you? Of, of course I do. I mean, I'm going to be offending, aren't I? If all goes well, then yes. Of course, this is just a test. We wanted everyone to start without pre pre preconceptions, a blank slate, as it were. There's a difference between having a blank slate and just being totally clueless. Whose dumb idea was that anyway? Well, mine. Committee chair, remember? Oh. Well, if you, if you want to know that badly, I suppose, I could give you permission to examine the scene of the crime. Good. That's better. But you can't talk to anyone involved with the case. What? Then how am I supposed to defend? You let me worry about the details there. Remember, I'm in charge of this trial. All of it. You don't want it to backfire, do you? Apollo, if I am in charge of the whole trial, that means the entire affair is my responsibility, for good or for bad. Just do what you can, and don't worry. I know what I'm doing. Alright. I'd recommend going down, to the going down to the detention center. Your client's waiting for you. You can ask about the scene there. But you just said I couldn't talk to anyone involved. Oh, you can, t oh, you can talk to your client. If you can get her to talk. 
Well, time's a wasting. Alrighty, let's go to the detention center. That's 20 minutes we've been waiting here. 20 minutes. Maybe I should complain. I'm sure that guard has better things to do than stand there pretending he doesn't see us. You know, the minute we get angry, the client will show. It always works that way. Like shouting, oh, waiter, and they're standing right behind you. Oh, guard, is our client going to be much longer? What are you talking about? Haven't you already started the meeting yet? Huh? Uh, I did this again. Oh, she's hiding. Ah! Where'd you come from? Well, anyway, please have a seat. I'm nervous, Apollo. It's the silence. It builds suspense. Why don't you do something, Trucy? You're a, mag you're a magician, aren't you? That's right. Okay. I am the amazing Mr. Hot. Ah! She passed out. Hmm. This magic underwear might have been a better bet. That's magic panties, Apollo. Can we talk to her? Um, uh, hi. Well, I'm your defense. I really think it has to be fate, you know. And by fate, I mean destiny. Did you know I'm good with astrology? Tell me, what's your sign? I can tell you mine if you'd like, Apollo. No, never mind. I just got carried away there. I seem destined to get at difficult clients, it seems. Um, so what's your name? Oh, right, I'm supposed to introduce myself first. I'm Apollo, Apollo Justice. And I'm Trucy Wright. I know, this is getting nowhere fast. Ah, sorry, dropped my thing. Hey, I know, maybe you can tell us what happened. I'm your defense attorney after all. Um, anything out of the ordinary happened lately? Well, the other day this tourist from out of town stopped to ask me directions. Later, Trucy. I feel like I need to ask directions myself here. Well, that was fruitless, though I think I understand despair a little better now. You did good, Apollo. Look, she's doing her nails. What? Are nails more important than defense? Is that it? Let's go, Trucy. Excuse me. Hello? Could you... Could you read this? Um, sure. I feel like a teenager on a first date, and this is the love letter we passed from desk to desk at school. Stop looking so wistful and read it, Apollo. It, it's a business card with a name and an address. The name is Vera, Mis Vera Misham. The address is for True Studio. And you're giving me this card because... So her name is Vera. Well, looks like we're finished here. I wonder if Juice Studio is the scene of the crime. Let's go find out. Let's go to Drew Studio right here. Whoa. Wow, this looks like, it looks like a studio. It's like life imitating art, or maybe it's the other way around. Hmm, but the tape on the ground there, it's a bit jarring. Yeah, looks like we found our crime scene. Apollo, look at all those paintings. Hey, don't touch those. It's okay, I'm just looking. Huh? Huh? Apollo, look at this one. Looks half finished. You can still see the rough sketch underneath. But that's odd. The rough part doesn't look like the rest of the painting at all. Yeah, good point. That is odd. Drew Mission's paintings. All the paintings have a really different style, too. Oh, I thought I might find you two here. Oh my goodness. Emma, look at long time no see. Oh, seems like I run into you far too often. I'll bet I know why, why you're here, too. You know about the trial simulation tomorrow? I've heard about it, sure. So Mr. Wright chose you, huh? We don't even know what, he, what the case is about. Well, he was killed. The artist who owns his studio, that is. Mr. Drew Misham. Misham. And his daughter was put under arrest. Yeah, we just saw her at the detention center. It was funny, though. She seemed more like a victim than the kind of person who could commit a murder. You don't say. Not even by poisoning. That's how it was done, you know. Poisoning's the common way to get the job done when the murderer is a woman. Poisoning? Anyway, Mr. Wright told me you'd be coming. Feel free to take a look around. I'll just be over here with my snackoos. We can't talk to anyone related to the case this time around. Which means we'd better find out as much as we can here at the scene. Or else. 
So this um, Drew Mitchham was some kind of an artist. Apparently, did a lot of illustrations from books. I hear had a lot of female fans too. For what it's worth, for what it's worth. Oh well, I guess this stuff is kind of pretty, like that oil painting over there, for instance. Um, yeah, that wasn't one of his illustrations, actually. Huh? So it was a standalone painting or something? Is that what she means? He was, was an odd bird, Misham. Hadn't shown his face to anyone until the end. What do you mean, to anyone? He was always locked up here in the studio, apparently. His only connection to the outside world was, the, was through letters he put in that letter box there. Letters? Do people still write letters? What do you mean, Apollo? I mean, when, when was the last time you wrote a real letter? Don't most people use email and stuff these days? Not Mr. Misham. Couldn't stand technology, it seems. He did everything by mail. Maybe he thought that way was more artistic, you know? In any case, the only person besides him allowed in here was his daughter, Vera. Oh, you mean the killer? The, su the suspect, please. He took some fingerprints, of course. The only ones found in the room were Mr. Mission's and Vera's, basically. Basically? Actually, last night, Mr. Mission gave an interview to a reporter for the first time. It happened during the interview, apparently. Oh. His first interview ever? Can you tell us a bit more about what happened the night of the murder? So this woman, Vera, she's Mr. Mission's daughter, right? Yep, a real sickly girl ever since she was little. Hardly ever went outside. She did kind of give off a withdrawn sort of aura. She was homeschooled by her father, apparently. It was quite a scene when they took her to the detention center. She was screaming about how she di she'd die if they took her outside. That doesn't sound like a scene. In the end, she agreed to leave if she was allowed her good luck charm for her company. Her good luck charm? Apparently, she has this charm that magically gives her the courage to go outside. Why can I ever get a normal client? But why would a shut-in daughter kill her own dad? Don't look at me. So about the poison, it was found to be in his coffee, right? No, not precisely. Not precisely? What does that mean? It means see for yourself, I think. Like I said, last night was the first time someone from the outside came into the studio. I guess mysterious painters who never go outside make for good articles. And it just so happened that he died the night of his first interview. At around 9 o'clock p.m. every night, Vera always made him a cup of coffee. Last night, he drank his usual coffee and suddenly became violently ill. And, and, and died? She poisoned him on the night of the interview? Wow, wouldn't, or, wouldn't the reporter see? He wasn't near Mr. Mission when she brought her father his coffee. He was checking out some equipment in the back of the room. Supposedly, that's why she didn't, she didn't notice he was there. It was the reporter who called the police, in fact. Wait, but why is she the suspect? If anyone is suspicious, it's the reporter. Yet the reporter never got near Mr. Mission's coffee. Even Vera acknowledges that. Regardless, I want to know more about this reporter. Alrighty. So now, where do we go? Detention center. Oh, here we go. Detention center. Oh, you're here to see Vera Misham? Yes, that's right. She's in the medical office at the moment. Medical office? Is she okay? She's just lying down, says she didn't feel so good. I'm sorry, but I can't allow any meeting in the moment. Most annoying client ever. Guess we should come back. All right. Right agency. Hey, right. Sunshine Coliseum, here we go. Here we go. Woohoo, this is it, Apollo. The place where magic and dreams converge. Just a while ago, it was the place where murder and nightmares converged. Let's go say hi to Uncle Valent. What about the case? Whoa ha 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 ha. Only performer laughs like that. The young Miss Trucy, how often I hope we'd meet again only to- Oh, sorry, that was not, that's not his voice. Maybe that should be a voice. How often I hope we meet again only to tell myself it was an impossible dream. Gee, Uncle Valent, how's it going? I'm glad to see you too. Of course you are. Humility is definitely not one of his stronger traits. All right. I'll go back to my regular voice. Well, Miss Lucy, how does this day find you? If you've come to give me flowers, do it after the show. I beg you. Actually, we came to wish you good luck. And congratulations on your big magic show. Oh, but it is I who wish to congratulate you. Not everyone is so lucky as to witness miracles such as I shall before. Yeah, yeah, you're amazing. We get the, we get the picture. The world will watch and wonder if this magnifies the illusion you are born. You're on stage by my hand. Alright. Everyone's talking about the big magic show. Is it true that the Grimaria miracle is back after a seven-year absence? 
Mr. Rusi, I must apologize. The show in his honor should have been his. Daddy! My co-magician in training was Zach Lamari if that terrible thing hadn't. It's okay. Your father was a great magician, Trusi. If he were alive, then I, Planet Grimari, would have been proud to stand upon the stage as his assistant. Thanks, Uncle Valent. You know, I'm happy you're doing the show. To think we get to see the great magnified illusions again. She really is looking forward to this, isn't she? My mentor, the magnificent magnified Grimari, was a true deity among magicians. The creator god who gave birth to magic and illusions with the fire of her imaginations. I was so little when I last saw one, but I still remember his shows. He did wheelies in a sports car through the air above the audience, and then sped off to outer space faster than the speed of sound. I'm guessing that memory was a bit embellished. For seven long years, the world has been waiting for a miracle to match his. As heritage of the Dramari troops' secrets, it falls to me to provide one. It is my God-given destiny. Um, yes, you nameless face who speaks for the nameless masses. How can I help you? If the world was waiting, why did you hold off for seven long years? Hmm, it appears the lad is unfolded. Perhaps you've heard of the magic known as law, which confirms, gov governs our land. I have, though I'm not sure it qualifies as magic. The holds of magnified the magnified miracles can possibly. A certain law prevented it for seven years, but no more. Seven years? That phrase she likes to pop up, doesn't it? And why was that? A little matter called performance rights, Mr. Miss Trucy. Can you tell us about these performance rights? Magnifies magic are an incredibly innovative idea. The trick was considered his property and as such was protected by property laws. Oops, sorry. Ah, how do I get out of here? Ah, darn it. There we go. Intellectual property, maybe. Nine, if I knew this, I'd be quick to his will. To one person. You mean him? Yes, Mr. Lucy, it was your father. Zachary was the inheritor of the Gramaya miracle. Daddy! Yet, as you well know, he is gone. He disappeared suddenly, seven years ago. I think I see where the story is going. Once a person is classified, missing for a certain period of time, they're considered legally deceased. Correct? And all absoluteness. And you love to see his conceal your competence as well, young man. A certain period of time is w of which you speak is seven years. Ah! Yes, Miss Trucy. Though it pains me to say it, this past spring of April, to be precise with the time, your father was legally declared deceased. In the absence of a formal will, the secrets of our mighty knight mentor, Magnify, passed to me. This was in fact stipulated in the will by Magnify himself. Is that how it works, Apollo? Yeah. It's called death and absentia. He's declared missing from permanently. Daddy. Alright, so... Done talking to him. Okay, Drew Studio. We talked to her about everything, pretty much, so... Maybe we should ex maybe we should investigate the crime scene. All right. Drawers. Hey, there's a painting hidden behind back here. Hey, you're right. What if it's embarrassing somehow and you didn't want anyone to see it? You certainly seem pleased by the possibility. Huh? It's so normal. That's hardly something to get mad about. Huh? What is it, Apollo? Well, doesn't this painting look like? Never mind. Never mind. Oh, sorry. Huh? I better get a professional opinion on this. Okay. It's a coffee cup. Ah, it's the victim's coffee mug. Aha, so the poison was in here. This is my first time seeing a real poison mug of coffee. I would hope so. Poison coffee? Not exactly, actually. What do you, what do you mean? No traces of poison were found in the coffee. What? You'll have to figure out the rest yourself. I'm officially not on your side after all. Alright. I imagine this coffee cup was for guest. Oh, sorry. Mm. Alright. Oh, crap. I wasn't trying to, I was looking at these other things. That letterbox looks funny sitting inside a room like this. Let's take a look. Empty. The other half of that letterbox is actually connected to the outside of the studio. Mr. Mission would put his letters in there, and the postman took them away. 
Impressive that someone still writes letters in this day and age, or wrote rather. I wouldn't mind taking a closer look at those paintings. I just love oils. You know how they're so thick? Is that the word? Uh, this is not taking us anywhere. Should we show her the painting or something? Oh, Emma, I was wondering about this painting here. Ah, ah, that one, what about it? What about it? Yeah, what about it, Apollo? Take a closer look at it, both of you. Now look at this one. Oh, whoa, this is the third painting he was working on. Hey, they're the same. I was, I was hoping you wouldn't find that. You're right, though. G-Mission was copying this painting. Wow, it's pretty good. Copying a painting? What for? Um. Oh, here we go. Found something else to talk to her about. I bet Emma could help us out here. Don't forget, flattery will get you everywhere with her, Apollo. Huh? What are you two whispering about? Well, I was thinking. I mean, what is it we always do when we run into you at a crime scene? What is it we always do, scientifically? Ah, you know me too well. Okay, meaning we can get um, scientific, scientific now? Oh, I suppose. Just this once. Bring me anything you find suspicious and we'll check it out. Okay. Alright, let's let's investigate around here a little bit more. Iggy Apollo, that's where the body was. That's the spot where Mr. Drew Mission passed away. He put the coffee mug to his lips in the next moment. There's quite a bit of paint on the ground. See that half-painted painting there? He must have been working on that right after the moment that he died. Wow, a true artist to the end. And maybe he started it a year ago and was procrastinating. Oh. Alright, so let's show her the painting. Oh. Did you check it or something? Go back. Is there anything here we forgot here? Okay, this is not getting us anywhere. Uh. Well, there's gotta be something we're missing here. Same thing. I wasn't even on that. That was really weird. Let's take a closer party. Mm. I don't know what to do. Hey Apollo, this painting, I know it. Huh? Really? It's that story where the old woman is doing the wash in the river. And this gi giant peach comes up floating on down. 
That might possibly be the strangest thing I've ever... Oh, sorry, that was him. You rotate it around. Yeah, nothing seems to be odd about the painting. Hey, look there. That stain doesn't look so healthy, Apollo. That must be the Blue Mountain stuff we've been hearing about. Something tells me that even Blue Mountain coffee isn't this blue. Well, this stain is probably... Hmm, better ask Emma. Can we show her the coffee mug, then? Um, Emma, about this mug. There's a pale blue uh, residue on the rim. Eh? That? Yes, well, it's just a rumor. But I've heard there's a kind of coffee called Blue Mountain. I'm pretty sure it isn't actually blue, Emma. Oh, this is not going this anywhere. Turns blue when it touches poison. Okay. So the poison that killed the victim was on this mug? That's right. See, if it wasn't in, it wasn't in the coffee, the killer applied it to the rim of the mug itself. Wow, science is amazing. It certainly is helpful. Maybe Emma would be willing to help us out a bit more. We should try buttering her up, Apollo. They say flattery will get you everywhere. It's certainly worth talking to her a bit more. Um, about poison analysis. I was afraid you were going to ask about that. See, this solution is used to test for uh, atroquinine. Atro, huh? Atroquinine, the deadly poison found in the, in the autopsy. Uh-oh, I know that spark in her eyes. She's getting excited. Best tread lightly. It's one of the most virulent poisons, but it is absorbed into the body astonishingly, astonishingly slowly. It takes at least 15 minutes from the time of ingestion as adverse effects to show. Oh, and guess what? Recent re research has shown... That's fine, really. We don't need to know all the, the, all the gory details. I think I get it. You, get, you must spray this stuff on something you want to test, right? Precisely. You can find even the slightest trace of poison with this. I want to try too, Emma. Pretty please? You don't have to ask twice. I already used it on everything suspicious, of course. Here, let's give it a whirl, Apollo. Ah! Ah, uh, what are you doing? I was just seeing if I got a reaction off of you. How's this for a reaction? Never do that again. I'm not poisonous. Tell that to those hapless witnesses on the stand. Let's just get down to checking for real poison, shall we? Okay. more on this side too. Forgot about that. Hmm. Is there something there? Oh, okay. Alright, not seeing anything. Okay. Reaction, Apollo. Ah, where, where? The inside of that cute little frame, Apollo. Well, where'd you look at that? Nice going, Trucy. I'm known to work magic. Never mind that I was the one who found it. Why would the inside of that frame have poison on it? It looks like we found the only other place that was poison in any case. All right, so we didn't even examine over here yet, so. Let's take a closer look at this desk here. It's in here. This envelope has been opened and resealed. Oh, I know how to do that. You take a pot of po boiling water and hold the envelope up to the steam. The glue melts and it opens. Cool, huh? Whoever did this wasn't so delicate. You're right. Looks like they just ripped it open and stuck it back together. Huh? The postmark on this letter is from seven years ago. Why would someone open a letter and seal it again? Hmm, I better hang on to this. 
All right, so we got something there. All right. So we can show her that too. Emma, about this. Oh, that. That. <laughs> Sorry, yes, the way it's a bright red envelope. She sure is jumpy. Someone opened this, didn't they? My lips are sealed. Your lips are sealed? That's a first. You mean, you know what's inside the envelope? Sure, I read it after all. Ah, you mean you were the one who ripped this open? Ha, please, I would have steamed it open. But she did sneak a peek at it, apparently. Now that I have a powerful weapon on my side. Weapon? Yes, the use of tools. Highly specialized tools for information gathering. Tools I wouldn't mind getting my hands on. You should try flattering her, Apollo. They say a little praise can open big doors. Never heard of that one, but it's good advice. Let's try talking to her some more. About that envelope we found. I was wondering if you could help us out with that tool you were mentioning. You want to know about my tool, do you? It's called an x-ray analyzer. An analyzer. X-ray, like the x-rays you get at the dentist? That's right, at least that's what I call it. Huh? It has a real name, but it's much more complicated. The x-ray spectralization... Something. How am I supposed to remember all that? <laughs> so basically, it lets you see inside things, like envelopes. That's right, you're sharp, Trucy. But it's a bit more complicated than that in practice, of course. Actually, to tell the truth, I'm not really sure how it works scientifically. Can I try it out, Emma, please? Oh, I suppose. Of course, I've already checked out everything as suspicious myself. Alright, let's give it a spin, Apollo. Ah, oh, what are you doing? Oh, just seeing if I... Stupid Trucy. Point the thing at me anymore and it might all fall out. Then I wouldn't need an x-ray machine to see through it. Let's just get down to business, shall we? Right, let's test it on a sample first. It just so happens that I have a lottery ticket here. You set the sample in the device like so. I don't see anything. Patience, there's no need to get all antsy. Look at the right side of the screen. That's the layer view of the envelope. Layer view? You've got it set to display the outside of the envelope now, see? Actually, it's quicker to just have you give it a try. Turn that dial there for me, would you? That's right, that's how you choose what depth you want to scan. Hey, I got something. See, that's how you can read the letters on the ticket inside. Cool, huh? Except, I can't read I can't read them. Just turn the dial a little more. What you have to understand is that a sheet of paper isn't really flat at all. When you zoom in that much, you see that paper is like a bunch of hills and valleys. Well, wow, really? This x-ray device uses a beam with a wavelength of only 0.05 microns. It breaks cards down into thin layers so it can only show what's written on that layer. I'm not entirely following you, but what good is it if you can't read anything? That's why we go on to step two. Try rubbing the image a bit if you, if you would. The image? You mean rub the screen? There, that fixes the image on the screen. Now turn the dial again, just a little. Good, now you can rub this image to fix it too. Hey, I get it, we just keep doing this until we've got the whole thing. Exactly, not bad. Neat, let's do some more. Okay, let's print this one out. Hmm, does this mean I have to buy another one to win? Well, it's Emma's ticket. Let her buy another one. It's okay, there's no need. But see, this is the true hidden power of my weapon. Neat, huh? Now let's try it out on the, on the real thing, shall we? This is really weird.
Okay, let's print this one out. Someone deposited $100,000 into Mr. Mission's account? These paintings must be really valuable. There's another page in there. Care to take a look? You bet I do. If you're going to read someone's mail, you might as well read it all. Here goes with the second page, then. This is really cool. There we go. Okay, let's print this one out. So it was a letter about payment for one of his paintings. Why all the secrecy though? And, and what? Why was this letter the only one in here? It's seven years old, right? Maybe it had some special significance to him. Well, Emma, well indeed. She knows something she's not telling us. Looks like she's keeping mum about it. So Emma, I was wondering, what's the story about this reporter that came here for a story the night of the crime? Uh, I'm afraid I can't tell you because he's going to be a witness tomorrow, I hear. I thought so. I'll never forget that face. But what was his name? Oh, right. Br Brush Brushel. Brushel. He's after a scoop to sell the papers. So a report- So a report comes for an interview with a painter. His first interview ever, and that night he's killed. Seems strange to you? Really strange. It does raise a few questions. I'd, I'd like to speak with this reporter if I could. Well, I hear he's on the beat today, too. He said something about covering a magician. Magician? Well, if it's not true, that leaves only one other person. It wasn't Val and Grimani by any chance, was it? Yeah, something like that. He's got some big show lined up, I hear. So he's out interviewing... So he's out interviewing Val and Grimani. Looks like I'll be heading out to that Coliseum again sooner than I thought. Here, I'll give you that reporter's card if you want. Okay, so now we got a couple things to show to Grimani now. Oops, I went... <laughs> Whoopsies. Sunshine Coliseum. I like this music. Alright, so what should we show him? Magic show ticket? No. Oh, here's his envelope from Mr. Wright. Um, I was wondering if you could tell me about this. Aha, what, what a bit of a you see you. Hmm. Uncle Valent, is something wrong? Trucy, where did you get this? Huh? Um, Daddy gave it to me. Your... Your daddy? My partner Zach. No, 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 my other daddy, Phoenix Wright. Why no? Why would your lord daddy? Lord daddy? That's kind of stretching the whole ar arcade thing a bit. The signature on the back, do you recognize it? That belongs to none other than Zach Ramaye. What? Daddy signed this? Might I be so bold bo as to open it? I'm sorry, but I can't let you do that. Mmm, uh, uh. What's in this envelope, I wonder? Huh. Alright, and uh, she told us to show him the Brushel card too. So a journalist was here on a story. All eyes in the universe are upon my stage. All pens seek to commit some mysteries to paper. Um, his name is Brushel. 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 I think he remembers him. He doesn't look too happy about it. Brushel, that cloying smell of mint when he sm smiles, yes. Um, could you tell us more about him? What did he want? Okay, now we've got a couple things to talk about him now. A man by that name called on me just now. Just now? Balance vision is, vision is always told tomorrow. Balance feet step always forward. That is all. That's all? Very confused. That's all very confusing. I am to perform a big magic show, yes. I wanted someone to co co cover it. Yet he had ears only for that incident. That incident? In any case, I requested that the rapacious reporter remove himself. So a painter has died. What of it? It is but a footnote in the footlights compared to the magic of Gamaye. Uncle Valen, do you know where the reporter went? I recommend you visit that place popular with penalized perpetrators. The detention center? He was a rude individual. Might I see that card? Uh, sure. He would tear apart my respectability. I would tear apart him. Ooh, here it comes, Apollo. Uncle Valen's big magic trick. Is he going to fix the card? Not sure that qualifies as big magic. What happened to the big magic? <laughs> Is enough more miracle miraculous for it to say ripped? I must have really not liked that journalist. Now the time has come when I must return to make my prestigious 
prestidigitation preparations by your leave, Miss Trucy. Thanks, Uncle Valent. Three days from now. Make ready for a miracle. What do you think that journalist was after? And why did Valen react like that to this envelope? Sorry if my voice cracks today, guys. I've been talking a lot today. I think it's time to pay the detention center another visit. All right. That'll be our next stop. All right, to the detention center. I think I hear what you're saying. We're all doing it for the money, end quote. No, 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 not at all. Looks like someone's already meeting here. Maybe that reporter. What the heck? <laughs> hey there, how you doing? Who are you be? Uh, sorry, we didn't know someone was already here. I'm Apollo Justice, attorney of law. Talk about a nervous monkey. You? Your justice? You? You know me? Do I know you? Of course I know you! Stares down witnesses on stand till they spill beans! End quote. That's not... That's not true. What's your writing? Are you a reporter by any chance? Ooh, you! You're Toshi! Eh, am I famous? Oh yeah, oh yeah! Toshi Wright hates carrying a bag! Puts everything she owns in her panties at end quote! Ah, that's so not true! Just hold on to your breeches there! I'll wrap up this interview in a jiffy! Interview? So, guard, I think I know what's going on here. Guarding rooms is my life. What else could I possibly need? End quote. No, no, how many times do I have to tell you this? Look, I've got work to do. You deal with him. Um, did you come here to interview the guard? Oh, wee, what a pickle. A Jews wouldn't talk. I had to interview someone or go plumb crazy. End quote. <laughs> what? I should have guessed. Where's my manners? Name's Brushel. Spark Brushel. Oh, this is the Brushel guy. I'm not picky. Journalist just closes his eyes. Writes. End quote. What's that nauseatingly strong mint smell every time he grins? That's what he was talking about. That's what uh, Gamari was talking about. Until you've been interviewed by me, you don't know what your feeling is. Wild romp through the crossroads of mayhem. Madness. End quote. I can, I can see that. He's writing something again. Or well, he's a reporter, maybe he knows something. Jeez, do we dare talk to him? So, Mr. Brushley, you're a journalist? Ah, me? Look at me. Look at me once he... State one thing. Look at me. State one thing for the record here. Yes, I'm the interviewer. You understand? Yeah, I'm the one asking the questions here. End quote. Okay. For instance, you think a movie director watches movies? Well, I think he probably does. Exactly. I know you understand. Huh? <laughs> Who he's talking about? So the night of the murder, you were at Drew Studio. Who me? Look. Let me state one thing for the, the record. Yes? I mean, look calm and collected, but I'm busy, real busy, always on the road. Journalist always buys one-way tickets, never looks back. End quote. I can understand that philosophy, but you want to know the thing about one-way tickets? Once you use them, they're gone. All because you have to get them to the guy at the airport. True enough. But don't they give normal tickets away, too? Exactly. See, it's the same thing. What is? Huh. This guy. I love this guy. So you went to do a story on Drew Misham and you've never had a story done about him before? That's right! Look, let me say one thing for the record here. What? I'm sure you're going to want to know about my source. What tipped me off to Drew? Why did the interview in the first place? Well, yes. Look, it's like... Oh! I've got it! Say there's this burger joint with fabulous ketchup. You think the burger guy is going to tell me where he got it? <laughs> At the supermarket, maybe? Exactly! See, that's what I'm talking about! I think I may have actually understood that one. Well, there's nothing I can talk about, really. Walls have ears, eyes, especially glass walls with speakers. End quote. Right, guess we'll leave then. Ah, uh, but since you're here, might as well tell you a tidbit of news I saw, just for the heck of it. Sure, tell us, just for the heck of it. I remember it like it was yesterday. I seen a movie on a trip and wandered into this burger place with amazing ketchup when an article in tabloid caught my eye. Famous oil painting stolen from art dealer's gallery. End quote, I believe it was. An oil painting? Happens every day, right? But I thought I'd seen that painting somewhere before. A painting of a giant peach, peach floating down a river. Someone stole an oil painting? Of a giant peach? Journalists can smell scoop better than burgers. End quote. Ooh, okay. So let's see if one of those paintings at Drew Studio is that peach one. Well, how'd it go? Find anything out? Actually, there was one thing I wanted to check with you. What's with that scary face you're making? And what's with the I know something, but I'm not telling face you've got going, Emma? <laughs> oh. Do we show her something? Oh, yeah. Well, what does the hidden painting look like? 
Notable for the large peach in the foreground. There we go. That's what we want. This painting came from behind that dresser. Ah, yes, so? It was stolen, no? I was hoping you wouldn't figure that out. Do you think, do you, think you could tell us a bit about this? I suppose. It's what you think. True mission was a forger. A forger? That's no good. So, what exactly is a forger? Well, basically, it's someone who makes forgeries. Fakes, in other words. Fakes? Like Crazy Red. <laughs> Copies of an original. Exact copies, so precise you, can t you can't tell them apart. Well, why not just photocopy them? The big problem with forgeries is that people try to sell them as the real, as the real article. It's a crime, of course. So, Drew Mission was... A criminal? I'm afraid so. He received money to create elaborate forgeries to, su to supplement his work in illustration, I guess. Oops, sorry. I see. Actually, that's why I brought this here in the first place. What do you mean? When you're trying to determine if a painting is a forgery, the rough sketch underneath can be a valuable clue. So the rough sketch is like practice for the real thing. Like doing a magic trick in front of a mirror before you go on stage. But not in the case of a forgery, not necessarily anyway. You know what the finished product is going to look like after all? Oh yeah, I guess you would. That's why I brought this. I'm going to use it to see what's under the paint of the finished pieces. I get it now. Not that I really needed to go to such lengths, seeing as how one of the paintings was only half finished anyway. Still, it'd be neat to see Mr. Misham's rough sketches. Kind of like what he was drawing when he thought no one was looking. True. That would be interesting. It may be valuable for our case. You should try buttering her up, Apollo. Claudia will get you everywhere, they say. Hmm, maybe I should ask Emma to help us out. Alright, so we'll show her the real painting. So we can get more information about that one as well. Um, I kind of wanted to see the rough sketch under this painting. And I was wondering if, if your tool there might do the trick. Oh, fine. Just, th fine. Just this time, though. Let's check it out. Oh. Switch to the bottom the screen here. Alright, are we picking a painting? Yep, okay, so we want uh, this one. Yes. Here we go. This is cool. Looks, it looks weird at first, but then it comes out to be something that you really don't expect it to be, which is really cool. Oh, whoa. That's really cool. There's a lot of new features in this Ace Attorney game. It's so cool. Okay, let's print this one out. What? What the heck? Wow, he really blows. The finished painting isn't anything like the rough. Devices like mine didn't exist until recently. He probably thought he could draw any sort of thing he wanted to for the rough. What do you mean? Well, in the past, you could only analyze the, comp the composition of a rough sketch. Composition? In other words, the traces of car charcoal between paint and canvas. So you could tell if, if there had been a rough sketch. But not what it looked like. Uh, I think I follow you. So in essence, it, would, it wouldn't matter what was underneath the finished painting. Some, sorry, some pros would actually paint out a rough sketch entirely, then do a completely new painting on top of that. So Mr. Mission was drawing whatever he wanted before painting over, the, over them? Possibly. Is there a problem with that? Not particularly, but something about the sketch itself is kind of odd. You're awful silent all of a, all of a sudden, Apollo. You think we could check out one of the other paintings? Well, sure. You like this detective detection stuff, don't you? All right. Um. Uh. All right. We'll look at this one, the second one. We'll go right to left. I can see why you guys like this case already. So this is a really cool feature, I think. What 
the heck? That's a house. Or something. I don't know what that is. Okay, let's print this one out. Yeah, it's like some kind of house thing. This one, too. What's wrong, Apollo? You look all ser so serious all of a sudden. Um, I think I, I could just look at the last of these. Fine by me. Knock yourself out. All right. Last one here. Sorry guys, if I'm not keeping this, it's hard to have the touch screen stay still while I'm rubbing it. Oh my god! That's the poker thing! From the first case! Holy crap! What the heck is all this? I hesitate to ask why you're getting so excited. You sure your, your device isn't leaking some kind of strange radiation? Chusey, look at Chusey, look at these three sketches. Do you notice anything? Are these all the cases in the past? There's one. Yeah, that's the that's the hut from the second. Oh my god, that's amazing. There, now you're both white as sheets. What's going on? These sketches are the three cases I worked on. What? The murder in the poker room at the Borscht Bowl Club. Then a dead man pulling the noodle stand. And then... Of course, the events that transpired during the Gaviniers concert. That is crazy! What could it mean? How could he have painted those things? And why? That's what I want to know. Wait, is Drew Misham... Your father? Give me a break, does that seem even remotely possible to you? Huh? I've never even heard of any true mission before. I hadn't even seen a picture of him. But there were my cases, drawn on his canvas. Every single one of them. It couldn't have been a coincidence. Just who was this true mission? And what did he have to do with me? Oh my god, this is insane! You guys are right, this case is very cool so far. I like this one a lot. Alright, that was really cool. Wow, we went for an hour? That only seemed like 30 minutes. Time flies when we're having lots of fun. That's for sure. All right, so that was it for our investigation day, I guess. Um, we really didn't have to do a whole lot there. We just had to, it was mainly focused on that, you know, the whole rubbing screen thing. That was really, really cool. I love that I love that new feature as well. There's so many new features in this Ace Attorney game, so um, maybe we'll run into some, something else as well. But uh, this case, is it looks really awesome. Um, I can't wait for the trial, or I think we're going to trial. It's, it's either investigation. Is it true? Well, yeah, because we saw the courtroom there. All right, so tomorrow we will be heading into our first day in court for the turnabout, what's it called? Turnabout succession? Yes, turnabout succession. So thanks for, yeah, oh my gosh, I got it. I've been talking all day today. So uh, thanks everybody for watching this uh, segment for Apollo Justice Ace Attorney for the beginning of turnabout succession. And I'll see you guys in my next video coming soon. Objection!